Hi, I'm Hudson Henry. I'm a Portland, Oregon based photographer and I'm really excited that On One Software has asked me to come and do another Perfect Inspiration video to talk about my passion for photography and how I use On One's Perfect Photo Suite 8 to both improve and streamline my digital workflow. I've always been inspired by a love of adventure for the great outdoors, for, for going out and having epic mountain climbing, skiing, travel adventures, and bringing back photos of the people, places, and animals that I encounter along the way. Uh, I really love visual storytelling, and today I'd like to talk about an image that I've kind of returned to with On One's Perfect Photo Suite 8 to get a really better result than I got originally when I worked on it. And the photo is part of a series that I shot in the North Cascades in a spectacular area called the Enchantments. My cousin Don Bevan and I spent three nights in this amazing granite lake basin. It's a high alpine chain of lakes and it's kind of a difficult climb to get up in it. We, we went in the fall to enjoy the, the large trees, which are these amazing deciduous conifers. It's a lot like a broadleaf tree that changes colors and loses its leaves in the fall, except that they're these golden, soft uh, pine trees. And they are just light the landscape beautifully. It's a steep trail up in there. You pass through these just amazing rugged granite landscapes and, and into these just bigger than life lake basins. If you're really fortunate like we were, you'll encounter a really mellow goat and maybe her baby to photograph, and the large trees just light the landscape. We were fortunate enough to have a lot of different weather. I remember this particular morning, the, there was this gap in, in the cloud at dawn, and I was just waiting for the sun to come up through that gap, and I just had a couple of seconds where the light came backlit through there and hit these tamarack trees and just lit them on fire. It literally lasted for just, just a couple of minutes. Uh, we went around and did some climbing. We climbed up this peak, Little Annapurna, and got some spectacular viewpoints and, and views out over Mount Stewart and some of the rest of the North Cascades, and just really enjoyed our time in there. Had, had some really nice weather towards the end of the trip. It, it felt like we shouldn't be leaving when we did. And my final night in the lake basin, I had this composition sort of in mind of this peak reflecting in this little lake. and light cooperated and I got the image that I'd really been wanting and as I was packing up I, I saw that the sky was just clearing completely and I thought geez we should not be leaving the weather's just getting amazing and but the next morning I woke up and it was pretty clear that winter was setting in and it was time to get out of the enchantment so we bundled up and headed down the trail but the last thing I did that last night before going to bed was take one last shot with my D700 of the stars reflecting in the lake with that peak that I was out photographing. And until now I haven't really found the time to go in and do all the work in Photoshop to, to pull the, the, the shadows out of this image without creating a lot of noise in the shadows. And, and you know I've been, I've been meaning to, but I just haven't gotten around to it. And with Perfect Photo Suite 8, and its streamlined workflow and the ease with which I've been editing my images and, and pulling contrast out of them, I thought I'd go in, play with my new toolkit, and see what I could do with this image. The way that I approach my raw processing is to do the very basic edits, color, tone, but not, not deep level editing in Lightroom, and then finish the images in Perfect Photo Suite 8. So I'm going to go into the develop module here and I've kind of got this prepared a little bit. I've already done some edits to this image and I've created virtual copies of it to do those edits on, which, which you can do in Lightroom by actually just right clicking or control clicking on the Mac and choosing create virtual copy. In this case, I've already created a couple and I've gone through and I've done my basic edits. I've, I've ramped up the exposure a little bit. I've boosted the contrast some kind of pulled the highlights down. I've set my black point and my white point where I wanted them. I always find it handy to hold the option key as I move these sliders around. You can see the stars are kind of blowing out. Um, I, I like it right about there. And then the same thing with shadows. I can see where am I starting to, to lose my shadow detail. I want to kind of maximize my contrast without really losing my shadows. 
And in this particular image, that's about the end of our tone and color editing. I'm pretty happy with the way the colors are looking. I don't feel any need to go into hue, saturation, and luminance. And I think we've got the tones at a good starting point to go in and finish things up in Perfect Photo Suite 8. The only problem is that with an image shot at this ISO for this long a shutter speed with this much shadow detail, we're undoubtedly going to have some problem with noise. And Lightroom's an excellent place to address this. Um, it looks to me as if we've got a little bit more noise in the lake, in the deep shadows, than we have in the uh, mountain, in the details of the mountain and in the sky. Uh, it's a little bit more luminous noise in the sky and in the mountains, and it's a little bit more color noise in the shadows. And so in this particular image, I've already gone through and, and done some editing of the detail pane in Lightroom. If I turn it on, you can see it improves quite a bit. I still have a bit of color noise infringing in the shadows. And let me show you, uh, oops, let me show you my settings here under the detail uh, panel. I've gone through and done some sharpening, and, and I just I think that a perfect inspiration episode is not the place to go into a high-level topic like sharpening. But I've gone through and done a bit of sharpening and some masking to keep the sharpening from really applying to the noise. And then I, I've done some luminance noise reduction. Not a whole lot of color at this point, and, and I've really been targeting the mountain and the stars. You can see when I turn it off, you know, there's a lot more noise in the trees and the mountains and the stars. When I turn it back on, we've got that, that pretty much solved, but there's still a bit of noise and color noise in the water. And what I've, I've got this idea to use perfect layers uh, in a way to blend two images, uh, the same image, adjusted two different ways in Lightroom. Uh, and so I've created another virtual copy of this image where I've gone in and really ramped up the luminance noise and the color noise reduction to really get rid of the problem in our water. Here you see we've got quite a bit of color noise going on, but we've preserved most of the detail in the mountain and in the trees and in the sky. When I go in and I really ramp up the noise reduction enough to get rid of our problems in the water, it starts to really soften. It almost gets kind of a an impressionist look to this instead of a photographic look. Um, you know, and, and some might prefer that, but I would prefer the realism. So what I'm going to do is select both of these images and I'm going to open them in perfect layers by choosing File in Lightroom, uh, Plugin Extras, and Open as Layers in Perfect Layers 8 and let's see what we can do about blending these two different noise reduction strategies one for the water and one for the sky so here we are in perfect layers 8 and I've got both versions of my edited file the one that's heavily noise reduced and the other one that's that's just really targeted more for the sky and the mountain layered on top of each other and the way that I'm going to blend them, since the more heavily noise reduced image is on top, I'm going to go into my layer mask and tell it to invert the mask, which will, which will hide that layer on the, on the stack. Uh, and then I'm going to choose my masking brush, and I'm going to paint that layer in using a perfect brush. And when I use the perfect brush, and increase the size a little bit. And one thing that we're enjoying in Perfect Suite 8.5 is a slightly larger Perfect Brush. And the Perfect Brush just keeps us from going across tone edges. In this case, I really only want to be painting in this blue sort of lavender part of the water. And I'm just basically painting that layer back in to the image and you'll see on our mask on the filter stack that the perfect brush has done a really good job staying inside the lines and we can actually zoom in here uh, and have a look and see I'm going to hold down the space bar to scroll around in the image and you can see that as we uh, turn the image yeah it's really just only affecting that part of the image that we want so fantastic, I've got that accomplished. We've got the water uh, noise reduced just like we want, the sky less noise reduced. I'm going to go ahead and go back, have a look at the overall image and merge those layers into one.
bam. So that was simple. Now we're going to go into perfect effects and start playing with really finishing this image. Let's give it some pop. Uh, and my favorite filter that I always apply right off the bat in landscape photography is always dynamic contrast. And anybody that knows me knows natural is generally my starting point. It just gives that image that pop. And then down in your filter options, you have this incredible level of control. It's just one of my favorite photo editing tools ever. Because if I zoom in here, you can see that uh, when I play with these sliders, once the image resolves, you can see that the, uh, the small detail slider really affects just the more intimate little details in the image. The medium slider affects the blockier portions, you know, the edges of the rocks, the trees, uh, and then the large detail slider really hits those big chunky details of the image. So you can really choose where you're adding your pop, your mid-tone contrast, your, your dynamic. It's a dynamic contrast tool, just like the title states. And so I'm going to go back to my, to my natural setting. That's usually my baseline. And I actually really like it. I might add just a little boost of, of fine detail um, and come back out and take a look at the fit view yeah I think that just adds a lot of drama to the image right off the bat uh, then I'm going to add another filter to my filter stack and the filter I want to use next is one of the adjustment brush filters I want to see if I can lighten these trees a little bit so I'm going to actually click on the lighten adjustment brush and it, it's going to lighten the image with another mask over the top uh, an inverse mask and then we're just going to paint in some brightness in these trees. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that we can get a better view of what we're doing. And I'll just essentially brush these trees. Well, that's a bit too bright. We're going to turn our brightness down. I want it to be subtle. I'm always, you know, oh, not negative. We're going to go, let's watch the trees somewhere right in here, maybe. Subtle, right? Just, yeah, just a little bit of light we're adding. And once again, we're going to use the perfect brush so that we're not painting the hillside behind. And we're just going to catch some of this, some of this fire in the trees um, that I like so much. We're going to adjust our brush size using the bracket tools on the keyboard, the bracket keys. The left bracket key reduces the brush size. The right bracket key increases. And we're just going to paint a little bit of light into these trees. When we want to scroll around, I'll hold the hand tool with the space bar. Just pressing the space bar on your keyboard will give you the hand tool and you can click and drag. Uh, and we'll just get all these trees brightened up a little bit. The perfect brush keeps us from hitting the mountainside. Or, and I like the reflections of the trees brightened up just a little bit too. So let's zoom back out. I know it doesn't look like much right off the bat, but clicking this filter on and off, you can see we've just added a little bit of color to the foreground and those, those large trees are now part of the scene. So let's throw another filter up and see what we can do next. And, and this time I'm going to use a little contrast because actually I wouldn't have thought of it, but looking at the nice uh, thumbnail that on once provided us in its filter lineup, it looks like it might do something really nice with the stars and add some of the drama that was actually there. Um, so here again, we've, we've lit it up. It's done nothing. That's because it's a brush and we need to paint it in. So we've got our masking tool. We're set to paint in. We've got the perfect brush. And let's just see if we can uh, just add contrast to these stars. So using the perfect brush, wow, that's awesome. I'm going to make sure I don't put the little crosshair in the center of my paint tool over the line of the mountain because I only really want to be working on the sky here. And I'm just going to paint that contrast into the whole sky. And wow, that's just like removing a haze that you didn't even know was there until you saw it. Fantastic. All right, so that definitely has made a difference in our image. It's definitely added a lot of punch and interest. So the next thing, that we're going to add one more filter to our stack. And we're going to boost our shadows a little bit. And the shadows are looking just a little bit uh, dark to me. So I'm going to go into the Tone Enhancer and scroll down through all the filters that we've got until I see uh, shadows lighter. 
and I'm going to add that filter to our stack. And I think that we're a little bit um, a little bit too bright right now. So I'm going to turn the shadows down to about, let's see, I'm just going to watch it as I go. Somewhere right in here. Yeah, 20 looks nice. You can see it's looking looking really good. And you know, I really, I don't want to do this so much to the sky because we're losing some of that neat contrast we just added. So I'm going to go in here to the, uh, to the contrast brush that we just added and I'm going to go into the mask menu and copy its mask. Then I'm going to click back on the tone enhancer, our, our shadow lighten uh, filter, and I'm going to go to the mask menu once again and say paste mask. And now we have the same mask being applied, but it's being applied the opposite way that we want. So I'm going to go back into the mask menu one more time and invert the mask so that essentially we're taking the sky out of our adjustment. And I'm not real happy with what it's doing down in the water. I like what it's doing to the peak. I'm not so happy with what it's doing to the reflection. And so I'm just going to grab our masking brush one more time and I'm going to tell it that I want it to paint out instead of in. And we're going to leave its perfect setting on. Uh, and keep it rather big with the bracket key and we're just going to paint that effect right out of that water. Yeah, there we go. So we kind of cheated a little bit by copying and inverting the layer mask that we used before to get the sky out of the image, but we still have to do a little bit of the, uh, the hard work brushing the water back out of it. But with our perfect brush it's really not that hard work. I kind of think it added just a little bit of noise in the water shadow of the, the water's reflection of the mountain, so I'm going to paint that out too. And wow, I'm really liking what we're getting here. So the last thing I think I'll do, and that I commonly at least check, um, is what the effect of a little subtle vignette would be. I, I know the mountain is the centerpiece of our image, and I I love the big softy vignette and I love the subtle vignette in uh, Perfect Effects 8. Uh, I don't think the, I think the big softy is probably a little bit much in this case, but I think the subtle, yeah, it just draws our attention to the mountain and its reflection in the water. And I am really liking what we've got here. So we take a look. We liked the image as I edited it in Lightroom. I mean, I did. I thought it was a cool image. Look what we've got going on with just a few minutes work in Perfect Photo Suite 8. Wow, that is a huge and dramatic difference. All we've got to do is hit apply and it will apply the effect and save our image. And if we go back into Lightroom, I have that image right here. Let's take a look at it at uh, fit view in Lightroom and have a look at the whole image. And actually I like to, to take a look in the library module and, and look at my Lightroom edit. We're going to select that virtual copy that we did the light noise reduction on and, and go into the survey mode. And I'm going to hold the shift and tab key at the same time to really get a full screen look at just what we've done so easily in Perfect Photo Suite 8. It is such a fun set of tools to use to just get that pop to finish the image. So, an inspirational place and an inspirational set of tools from On One. Again, I'm Hudson Henry, and I really thank you for taking the time to watch this Perfect Inspiration episode. And thanks again to On One for having me on.